Yeah, we will say, I will go ahead and invite our uh, guest today, uh, Mikala Lane. Uh, and uh, she is a uh, well, director with the uh, Hamilton Scholars. So uh, Mikala, maybe you could just go ahead and introduce yourself and then maybe uh, walk us through about the program. Yeah, absolutely. And while I introduce myself, if you could give me the ability to share my screen, I can share uh, a couple slides as well. Um, but hello, everybody. It's awesome to be here today. My name is Michaela. I am the program director at Alexander Hamilton Scholars, which is a five year scholarship program. And I was also a person who went through the program. So whenever I was in high school um, in 2015, I was accepted in and I went through the full five years. And then I came back as an alumni to join the staff because I really love this program and everything that we do here. And I wanted to be able to help in the vision of making it expand and reach more students every year. So I'm super excited to be here with all of you. And I love Grace Mary as one of our uh, previous scholars. She has been an absolute brilliant mind to join our family. So I'm hoping to see some other familiar faces um, as we go through the next application cycle. Great, great. Uh, thank you so much. I have, uh, I, I, like I said, thank you so much even uh, to hear that uh, at least uh, Grace is one of your best students and uh, we also want to hear that and we want to make sure that we also give you the best students for the next cohort class. Uh, <laughs> so that uh, we can be able to create a better life and future for them. Uh, so I, 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 I would definitely want to invite her again. Uh, she can be able after you will really listen to you. We can invite her also to share her experience. But I think for now I have also enabled the screen sharing. So if it's okay with you, you can go ahead and uh, proceed. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, there we go. Awesome, so I am just going to provide an overview of the 2022 Hamilton Award, which is our next cycle coming up, um, as well as our empowerment program that goes along with the award. And again, I'm just so excited that you all could join me today. Um, and I really am looking forward to sharing more with you about our program. So for the next about 10 minutes or so, I'm just gonna go over our vision and mission. I'll talk a little bit about the award itself and explain what earning the award means and then go over the important program elements um, such as the Pillars of Success, Leader Weeks, and Program Goals. And then we are also um, hosting an informational webinar next Wednesday. So I'll also at the end tell you all a little bit about that. Um, if you are watching the recording right now um, or in the room in case you want to hear from some of our other students or join us live again to ask any other questions. So again, my name is Michaela. Um, I'm the program director here at Hamilton and I am a 2015 HAMI, which is what we affectionately call all of our students who go through the program. I um, mean, you can learn a little bit more about me um, on our website. If you go to hamiltonscholars.org slash team, there's a little bit more about everybody that is on our small team. We have about um, three to six people who work here full time. So I wanted to start off by taking a moment to tell you a little bit about our mission and vision, because this is really the crux of everything we do. So the mission is what we do every day. So we are um, inspired by Alexander Hamilton's legacy of leadership through service. And so we hope to empower high achieving, underserved young leaders to thrive in college and beyond. Um, so our alumni are very important to us. Once you finish the five-year program, you are still a member of our community for the rest of your life. And we're always putting on programming for those who are transitioning into career, ending up in grad school, doing gap year service opportunities. So you are never um, lost of resources once you enter our program. We are always doing um, calls and curriculum with you. Um, and so then our vision is what we the impact that we strive to have. So we hope to have a community of ethical leaders who break barriers to build an equitable society. And so in short, this program really isn't just about the 40 scholars that travel to New York and participate in the Hamilton model of youth development, but rather it's about giving these scholars the necessary tools to succeed so that they in turn can pass these same tools onto their communities and be agents of positive change. 
And so one of the main questions we get is why are we named after Alexander Hamilton? Um, and there's a lot of reasons that our founder chose um, for us to be named after him. He was the only founding father of this country that was actually born into poverty. Um, these facts are a little bit more well known now that the musical is out. Some people have heard the soundtrack at this point, um, but he was born um, with his mother in poverty and then she unfortunately passed away. And so it was really because of the community that he had around him that provided mentorship and support, even from when he was just a child, um, that allowed him to go on and have all of the opportunity that he had. Um, so we try to encompass that in our program as well, um, because all of the people who gave into him, he then in turn came back and gave back as a leader and is one of the reasons why this country exists now. And so we try to emulate that in our students. Um, however, we know that everybody is a person, even a founding father, so we are also very critical of some of the other components of him and his um, decision making that he made when he was alive. And so we also think about how we can learn from those mistakes that he might have made um, and allow that to help us make better ethical choices as well. So the fun part is telling you all about what our um, scholarship winners receive. So we are open to high school juniors, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Um, but all of our high school juniors are enrolled in a five-year empowerment program. So you start as a high school junior, and the formal program ends whenever you graduate from college. And so in that time, at the beginning and at the end, so in high school and upon graduation of college, you receive two $500 scholarships. We also provide a laptop after you graduate from high school to use whenever you go into college. And then every year you um, travel with us to an annual leadership conference. And this is all expenses paid. We fly you out to a different city every year um, for about one week so that we can all see each other and have sessions together. Um, we also provide college application guidance and scholarship and financial aid assistance. So I was able to look at um, your all's website and I loved that I saw the ACT prep and um, some information about how to fill out the FAFSA. And we do a lot of that here as well. So we have college admission counselors and we have financial aid counselors that work one on one with each of our students. Um, and they provide individualized support depending on your situation to make sure that you are finding the colleges that are the best fit for you and that are going to be the lowest cost for you. Um, and then we help you all the way through the application process. That's why we start junior year of high school to make sure that we can help you right from the beginning. Um, and we provide free test prep through a partner organization. Um, we provide free looking at your financial aid packages and advocacy for you on campus um, to make sure that the school is also giving you the most money that we know that they could. There's also a lot of individual and group support. So we do one-on-one -on -one calls about two or three times a year with each student. So you talk one-on-one um, -on -one with one staff member, whether it's on a phone call or on Zoom. Um, and we just see what you're grappling with at that moment to see what supports you need. Um, and we have the last 15 years of plenty of resources and calls and worksheets, um, and also just other people in our community that we can connect you to. So it's really whatever you struggle the most with is what we will lean in and help with. Um, and then group support in the form of your cohort. So we bring in up to 40 students every year and you travel through the program with those same students. So you really get to form a bond with those who are your exact same age going through the same experiences. And then you have access to the rest of our network. So those who are going in right after you, those who came in right before you and all of our alumni as well. So the rest of our network also makes up mentors that you are always allowed to tap into. So whenever you first enter um, college, you receive a Hamilton mentor that is one year above you that just went through the college application process so they can tell you everything they experienced. And then you receive another mentor when you're about to graduate college that what matches if you wanna to go to grad school, we match you with somebody that is in grad school right now so you can talk to them about their process. Um, if you're entering the career um, in a specific field, whether it's business or tech or um, service, then we match you with somebody who just did that as well so they can tell you everything they learned about living on their own. Um, and then finally, we provide internship opportunities. So we host three interns with our office. 
um, that are all of our students. So you could come live in Seattle um, and help us with some of our programming or marketing or development. Um, but we also have internship partners all across the country that um, open specific spots for our students every year. So some of our internship partners are the New York Historical Society. Um, if any of you are interested in working in a museum or working on history, um, we also have some partners in youth development. Um, so you can work with other students with similar backgrounds to you. Um, we have a partner, the Kent Graduate Institute. So if anybody's interested in going into medicine, um, they provide a um, medical school application boot camp free of cost to our students. Um, and they also provide um, a program where you go to California for a week and learn about the different jobs you could work in the medical field. Um, so those are just a couple examples of our internship partners, but those are only open to our students. So you have a higher chance of being able to receive those opportunities. And so to talk a little bit more about the empowerment program. So this is everything that happens when we are not um, doing conference calls or assignments or internships. So up to 40 students from across the nation are selected annually as winners of the Hamilton Award. And through the course of the five-year empowerment program, they receive all of these resources of mentorship, practical guidance, and a comprehensive network of support, much like Hamilton himself did. And so each year of the program, um, we take you to an all expenses paid leadership conference hosted in various cities. So for example, um, a 2022 HAMI would travel to New York City in July of 2022 before starting their senior year of high school to meet with financial aid counselors and learn about the college application process. And then they would travel to Seattle in the summer of 2023 before their freshman year of college to learn about how to make a successful transition into college. Um, then between freshman and sophomore year of college, we all travel to Puerto Rico to learn about cultural humility, leadership, and service. Um, before junior year, the focus is more on planning for life after earning an undergraduate degree. Um, so we meet in Dallas, Texas to talk about options like graduate school, gap years, transitioning to career. Um, and then the rest of the program is focused mostly on facilitating that transition and again, providing um, whatever you need to fill in the gap to be successful there. And so in addition, all winners have access to our internship programs um, and join a distinguished cohort of peers from across the United States. And this scholar community now extends back through 15 years of cohorts. So everybody really supports one another as they take steps together towards achieving a college education and a meaningful career. Um, and also eventually becoming leaders who change their own communities, our nation and our world through their service, innovation and excellence. So the program consists of individual support through phone calls, video conferencing and emails with the AHS staff members, um, and then also your assigned peer scholar mentors. Um, and then the group support and learning is offered through our conference calls and leader weeks. So the leader weeks is those conferences I just named off in New York and Seattle. And then our conference calls um, are really designed around our five pillars of success which are transition, heritage, empowerment, financial literacy, and leadership. So to tell you a little bit more about what all of those mean, um, for transition, we really focus on key periods that research has identified as being particularly challenging. So that, that transition from high school to college and then from college to whatever's going to happen next. Um, for heritage, we work on instilling the idea that understanding the history of the United States is vital to claiming personal, political, and social power. And we really focus on the true history. So not necessarily the history that you might be learning in textbooks that's very whitewashed and very savior, um, but really looking at the holistic perspective of um, what colonization looked like and how we can start to decolonize the United States. For empowerment, we convey the knowledge and confidence to excel and thrive as you all pursue your ambitious goals. So we actually have an empowerment toolkit to help you identify your own values, your own vision and mission, and your own goals um, that you want to work on in the next seven years. For financial literacy, we provide understanding of the financial aid process 
um, for college, but then we also provide budgeting tools and awareness. So we help you um, figure out how to make a personal budget, how to be aware of debt, um, student loans, how to manage debt if you have to come into it, um, and how to make do informed investing. So we do talk about what retirement is and how to plan for your future. And then finally, leadership. Um, so we impart Alexander Hamilton's legacy of principled character and commitment to public service in the face of adversity as the basis of true leadership. So we really focus on this idea of ethical leadership, where it's more about um, inspiring others as being a role model instead of, again, feeding into this like savior complex or um, putting other people down so that you can achieve power. And so I quickly just wanted to show you what our last cohort looked like because we truly are a vast um, community of students. So for our last cohort that received the award last year, 80% of them were the first in their family to attend a four-year college. And we look as first generation a little bit differently than the government might. So if you are the first in your family to achieve, um, to go to college in the United States, then we consider you first generation because you don't have that knowledge around you of the United States um, college application process. Um, for the household income, it's usually about half of the national USA median, um, but we really do come from all over the country. So you'll see here in the middle, this regional distribution. Um, we have a lot of students from the Southwest, but we also have them from the South, um, the Southeast. We have a lot in the Northeast. Um, and, and, some in the Midwest and Pacific Northwest as well, but we are expanding to those areas a little bit. Um, and then for our ethnicity backgrounds, we do have a lot who are African-American, Asian, Hispanic, um, and it's really split between urban and suburban areas, but we do have some rural areas as well. And so if any of this sounded interesting to you and you're thinking, wow, I wonder if I can apply, um, here's what we look for in the criteria for choosing our next round of Hamilton scholars. So um, we support high achieving underserved youth across the country, as I mentioned. I mean, you can apply for this program if you are a current junior in high school, um, if you have a GPA of 3.0 or higher, but if your GPA is lower, you can still apply. We do look at, there's some essay prompts that you could fill out um, if your GPA is lower than that, especially if you had some extenuating circumstances in the last couple of years, which I know we all have with the pandemic. So um, we do give you a chance to talk a little bit about why your GPA might be lower than that. And we do take that into consideration. Um, you do have to be planning to go to college because we do focus on that transition to college. Um, and you also have to be committed to doing the full five years of the program. Um, so it's not necessarily something that we want you to just use for the college transition and then be done. We have a lot of resources for all the way through college and afterwards. So we do want you to be committed to staying with us for that full time. If you get into the program, you are asked to participate in all of those leadership conferences in the different cities. Um, and again, those are at no cost to you at all. We fund the entire trip. So you are asked to attend those every year and then attend the conference calls and assignments every year. Um, and you do have to have a demonstrated financial need. So we kind of use the household adjusted gross income of 100,000 as our um, maximum. But again, we also know that family situations are very unique. And even if your family has more income than that, you might be sending money to family members back home. Um, you might be dealing with debt or medical bills, and we completely understand that as well. So that is another place where there is an option to submit some more information um, and let us know what your real financial situation is so that we can take that into consideration. Um, and again, if you are worried about meeting any of these requirements, I really encourage you to reach out to me individually um, so we can have a conversation about your individual situation because we are flexible on most of these except for just the participation component. And so if you would like to apply for our next award, it is the 2022 Hamilton Award, and it is going to close on January 26th. So we have a little over a month um, where you could work on your application, but it is 
a lengthy application. So I would encourage you to start today, start looking through the essay questions. Um, you can find all of the information you would need to apply at our website. So it's hamiltonscholars.org slash apply. And there's information about specific parts of the program, some of the frequently asked questions that we get. And then there's also a link to the live application that you can start right now. Um, and again, as long as you have it submitted by midnight at J on January 26th, um, you will be taken into consideration. And then we have about three months of a judging process and we announce our winners in April of next year. And then we would take you to New York City in July of next year. So my advice when you're filling out the application is to really just provide um, as much information about your true authentic self as you can. Um, all of the applications are completely confidential. So we really look at them with our internal team, but that information does not get disseminated anywhere else. Um, and we're really just looking for people who we think really could benefit from not only the resources we have, but the community we have to offer. I um, mean, I quickly wanna go back to this slide about eligibility and mention, um, cause this is also a question I get quite a lot. Um, is there is no questions on here on eligibility about um, citizenship status. So we are one of the only scholarships that are open to undocumented students in the United States. Um, and we do ask that question only because we offer special programming for undocumented students. So our um, students that do not have citizenship are called our undocumented. And again, it is a private confidential group of our students um, that we provide extra resources to. So um, they receive mentorship from older students who either are still living in the United States with undocumented status, or they um, were able to receive citizenship after entering our program. Um, so we provide a lot of extra materials to those students. And then we also provide extra um, financial scholarship awards for things like a DACA application or um, some of the uh, other expenses like that. But all of our undocumented are still able to travel with us to our leader weeks. Um, we take extra care to make sure that we are providing transportation that is not going to put anybody in harm's way. So whether that means instead of getting on a plane, um, our students come to us by train or by bus. Um, and then we put extra safety protocols in place when we're at leader weeks to one, make sure that nobody um, knows about the person's citizenship status and also to make sure that everybody remains safe and confidential with that information. So I just wanted to put that in there as well because we do hear that a lot, especially because we are one of the only programs that support undocumented students. That's really important to us um, to make sure that those students are able to be a part of our community. So that is all of the information I have for you all today. Um, but if you have any questions about the program, um, you can email program at hamiltonscholars.org. You can also email me um, personally, and I'm happy to answer any questions. If you let me know that you are with this group, um, I'm happy to have an individual conversation with you about whatever is coming up. You can also call our office at the phone number listed on the screen. We're happy to answer any questions on the phone as well. Um, and now I'll open it if there's anybody in the room that has any questions right now um, that I can either answer as a staff member or as a student who went through the program, I'm happy to answer those. Great, great. That is very, very powerful information, uh, Michaela, for that great, great presentation. I think uh, uh, like uh, you mentioned that so many uh, I, I think this, I mean, for me, I've learned so much the things that I didn't know now, especially for, especially when it comes to the immigrants who may also have issues with uh, uh, status. I, I think this is an option that I don't think any of our people in the community know about it. And I have dealt with so many people, undocumented uh, students who always reach out and I, I feel so bad that I could not even give them the direction to, to try with you guys. Um, but also I like the flexibility of understanding that the challenges that immigrants go through. Um, and and that, that was actually one of the reasons why we started the mentorship program because uh, uh, 
we have parents who are not very familiar with the education system in America. We have high schoolers who are also struggling uh, to understand that. And maybe the teachers may expect that they will get a lot of help from home, uh, including the advice and even helping them. But they, the parents are not, it's not that they don't know, it's not that they don't want to help, but they don't know what to do. And I like that you have been able to, your, your program is flexible to capture uh, that uh, need actually in the in the immigrant community, including also the the fact that uh, uh, there is the burden that they also have you know, supporting their family back home, and they may not have enough resources to uh, that maybe the some of the program could be able to kick them out or disqualify them, but uh, not knowing that is a burden that they have on the side, including other responsibility that come with that. So I, I think, I mean, I've learned so much. I would just say, maybe uh, people can ask, with, if, if you're there and you have a question, you can unmute yourself. And uh, uh, we have a few minutes, we can just ask your questions uh, or any clarification that you may have. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say one more point on the um, Undaki Hammies. And um, we also realize it can be very lonely when your family doesn't quite understand enough to help you as I'm sure they want to. So we do put in some extra pieces to try to educate family members about what our students are going through. So we offer translation of all of our um, documents and some explanations of the program, um, because it really is an honor to be able to join the Hamilton community. So we do offer translation of um, materials so that families can read about what the program is. Um, and we do some extra calls with family members, um, especially around understanding how the United States system works and like that financial literacy component. So we try to support um, even outside of the student, we try to really put those um, resources in place for the families because it all affects one another, right? So. Great, great. That's, uh, that's one thing I like about uh, you, the, the Hamilton Scholars. It's really, really uh, addresses a very unique group and, uh, and, and a, a group that has a lot of potential uh, uh, that you're able to give them an opportunity to start to explore their full potential. Yeah, anybody has a question, so I will give, uh, you can, I don't know if you, even if you can't speak, you can put on the chat. And maybe as we get them to ask the questions, the part that I wanted to ask you is that um, I, this, this you recommend for students, it goes, uh, the, the people who apply are the juniors. Right. Um, what, what are the things maybe you would tell them? Because I know we may have some that are not uh, junior yet. What, what are the things you may be able to tell them to uh, get them uh, prepare uh, so that they can be a good match for what you're looking for by the time they become juniors? If you yeah, are that's a great question. freshman or 10th grade. Yeah, I would say we're really looking for students who have demonstrated um, wanting to help their communities. So if you don't have anything yet that um, is on your resume or an experience in serving your community, um, we really do look at that, whether it be like volunteering your time somewhere, um, or if you do things um, with this program where you're, I saw that you do like a service trip and you organize fundraisers and things like that. So we're really just looking for things like that, that you can talk about in the essays. Um, so you have a couple years, if you're not a junior yet, to be thinking about what type of impact you want to have on your local community and how you might expand that once you get to college um, to help your community at the college campus or even um, beyond that. So I would recommend looking into that. Um, I would also just say, stay connected to us, follow us on social media, um, be looking at our Facebook. We post updates about everything our students are doing um, and that'll give you a better idea of what our students look like and what um, they are accomplishing. And so that'll just let you know a little bit more about what to expect whenever you enter the program. Awesome. That is great. 
Uh, I have somebody who is asking, uh, can you go over the eligibility criteria again? Yeah, absolutely. Let me reshare that slide so that it's in front of us as well. There we are. Yes, yeah, so um, eligibility, these are the questions we ask for eligibility. Um, so you should be a junior in high school when you apply for the award. Um, we look for a GPA of at least a 3.0, but if it's lower than that, you can write in about why it might be lower and we take that into consideration. Um, you have to be willing to participate in the full five years of the program. Um, you should be planning to attend college um, and completing a college degree here in the United States. So we really focus our programming on the United States system. So you need to be planning to apply and attend to college whenever you enter our program. Um, and then you have to commit to coming to New York City with us um, in July of next year. Um, and again, you don't have to pay anything for it. We pay all expenses. Um, but you have to commit to being there um, as long as travel permits us to be in person. If not, it is online um, and participating in the conferences each year to your fullest ability. Um, after the first year, we understand other things come up. You might have other obligations, um, but at least New York Leader Week is really pivotal to be there. Um, and then finally, you have to have demonstrated financial need. So. We look for anything lower than 100,000 a year for your household income, but that's another place that um, we are flexible on if you want to write in some information about if it might be higher, but some of the expenses you have to understand, um, then we do take that into consideration as well. So I hope that helps. Um, it's basically just show a commitment to your community and have demonstrated need and be willing to be a part of the program is our main <laughs> criteria. Good. I, I like the, the, the flexibility and uh, the qualification. It looks like it, a lot of people can, can be able to benefit from, from the program. Uh, thank you so much, and, uh, uh, Madani, for that question. Uh, any other questions? Uh, you can unmute yourself and, uh, and ask, ask, uh, speak up, or you can just... Uh, Post it on the chat. Um, and, and as we get to, do you have, uh, is there a program that you guys do for, because I've, when, I, when, I, when I work with the youth, I realize that uh, when you're working programs that are in, maybe, and, and this may not make sense uh, to you, to things, but I find that uh, if you're able to capture some of this, activities very early, maybe in the middle school or earlier, then you kind of have a way to um, prepare them, the students a little bit more, get more prepared by the time they're in high school. Um, are there some similar programs you may recommend or you guys work with uh, for as early as middle school? Yeah, so in the Seattle area, we have a program called Rainier Scholars. And they do a lot of what we do. Um, I'll put these names in the chat as well. But they do a lot of what we do starting in middle school. And they are an extension of a program called College Possible, um, which is national. And there's College Possible branches all around that do a lot of this work starting in middle school. Um, but the we see a lot of students coming to us from the government programs of TRIO and Upward Bound. Um, those are fed through the schools um, and they have like counselors at school sites um, that work with students there. But a lot of our students come funneling in from those programs because they do a lot of these same resources and understanding before they get to high school even. So I put those names in the chat, but that's definitely like the four programs we see a lot of our students coming in from that does some of the preparation um, before we come in as juniors. Yeah, definitely. Would we'll, would we'll definitely want to follow up with them, and I'm gonna tell them, hey, I got this one from uh, Hamila. She says you have to take care of us. <laughs> Absolutely. I see, and uh, uh, I think there was a question there. Do they students have to attend annually, or is just the 
first year. I think you mentioned a little bit that you the first one is mandatory, but they're expected to also to put to, to attend every year. Uh, there's a question about that. Yes, so that's a great question. So you do definitely have to attend the first one, which is in New York. And after that, you are expected to attend the rest of them. And it's also just fun. You want to be there anyway. <laughs> um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Well, I don't need to be made, made mandatory. The New York <laughs> trip and is paid. I'm going. <laughs> My concern, I'm only wondering, like, if you're in college and some kids, like, after the first year, like, they're in college and they're taking summer classes or other things like that, like, what the expectations would be after the first year? Yes. yes. So we are, again, we're a really flexible program. If that hasn't come across yet, um, we do have some students who are doing like summer classes and internships and things like that. But we do work with their site supervisors so they can hopefully do both. So we have done like specific appeals to professors or to internship supervisors to ask if they can even come for half of the week or if they can split some of the work. Um, so we do like personal advocacy to make sure that they can be there. But if there's just no way that they can come at all, we try to make that up in other ways where they can come chaperone another leader week. Um, but they do have to do some sort of makeup assignment so that they're still receiving that same information. Um, so it's not as fun in, as being there with their cohort, but we do try to make up to make sure that they're receiving all of the information we would have been talking about in that week. That's, that's good. Uh, there is a question here uh, uh, about, could you share some of the, uh, your current uh, scholars where they are and what school they're attending uh, right now? Um, and I think uh, I mentioned for those who just joined uh, if, uh, late, um, Grace Mary, uh, this was her first uh, grant um, scholarship that she got. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that it opened up opportunity for her because she got it when she was, uh, she was in uh, junior. And uh, I think when she used that to apply to other scholarship and other opportunity kind of was a good, a good reference point for her. Uh, but I think the question here is uh, share a little bit about some of the success stories you've had with your students. Yeah, so I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, we have some of our student bios and college decisions on our website. And so that link takes you to um, bios of our 2021 hammies who are the last ones to come into the program. And then college decisions of our 2020 hammies who were, um, they're currently freshmen in college right now. Um, but we have students honestly all over the world as some really, um, very elite universities. So we have a lot of students that go to Harvard, Yale, MIT, um, a lot of the California schools like University of California. Um, where else? We do have some state schools because we don't focus necessarily on making sure you go into like an Ivy League school. Um, our students are just incredibly intelligent and <laughs> hardworking. So they do often end up at Ivy League schools. Um, but we focus more on the college that is the best fit for the students. And that might not always be an Ivy League. So we do, if a state school is going to be the best education or the best cost, um, we have about 85% to 90% of our students who are able to get a scholarship package where they don't have to pay for college at all. Um, and we have a lot of them that apply through like programs like QuestBridge, um, where they go in completely. Um, funded and they don't have to take out any student loans or worry about that cost. So we focus primarily on whatever schools can give you a really great education and that you don't have to pay for. Um, but as far as success stories, they are plentiful. <laughs> I will also give you a link um, to our newsletter where you can read about some of our students who are disrupting in their local communities. Um, and there's also a lot of stories on our social media and stuff like that if you want to follow us there. But um, just one that comes to mind right now is I just talked to one of our students who is um, a senior at Franklin and Marshall College. And I just talked to her yesterday. She's also named Michaela, funnily enough. Um, <laughs> and she, I met her whenever she was just about to start at Franklin and Marshall. So she wasn't even there yet. She had just graduated high school 
And she was telling me that she wanted to be a business major. And she has now gone on in college to um, decide that she wants to do international diplomacy. So she's getting her degree in political science and she is the president of the Student Government Association there. And she just got the Schwarzman. So she will be traveling to China next year to get her graduate degree fully funded. And she has done so much great work on their campus to um, address racism and to address inequities that their students are facing, that they just named an office after her on campus. So from now on, there will be the Michaela Ranges office um, that people can use um, for community events and things like that. So, I mean, that's student, all of our scholars have some type of story like that, but that was one that I was so proud of her and I will always take the opportunity to uh, gloat on her because she has done some really amazing things. Awesome, awesome. When I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, where was this information when I was in college, when I was in high school? <laughs> Why did I, but anyway, the people who are in there and those who will be able to listen to this, I will always say that uh, uh, there is a lot of resources there. There's a lot of opportunities there. You just have to go for it and, uh, and, 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 food, and, and connect. I think connect the right people. Um, any, any other question there? Uh, and thank you so much, Amazoni, for that comment and, uh, and, uh, and also the question. We, we wanna have like, uh, let's see, yes, we got like five minutes. To wrap it up, uh, I I see um, Wendy. She says I don't have much any question, but we appreciate you very much, Michaela. Thank you for taking the time to share this information with us. We all are looking forward to this collaboration. Thank you so much, Wendy. Um, and and uh, Wendy, uh, I I I I see. I don't see the reason why you, Joanne, and. Uh, Martha and not everybody else here in the forum here I should not be able to. I mean, you're smart kids. I know you guys are very smart and you have all what it takes to to get the best. I like the, the approach that you guys have that uh, uh, you 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 work with the students wherever they are. They want to go to a college that will be able to give them full scholarship or where they can be able to afford. I think the part that I, I like about is actually teaching them there. The, the the this the skills of life what i call this the basic the things that they are not able to learn in the classroom uh which uh, will be very helpful whether you go to an ivy league college or not but you need those skills of life financial literacy uh, what i call this people skills you need that and, uh, and, and and to be successful in 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 whatever you go in the at what workplace or even to be successful in the college. So I think that's one thing I'm really really uh, happy that you this, your students are able to to go. I mean to benefit from the program. I've seen uh, with uh, Grace Mary uh, with her uh, being a very uh, smart kid, but also being a human part of it, being able right. to be a human. How do you understand your Use, use your emotional intelligence to understand your, your, your different people from different background and also a way to use your that emotional intelligence to, 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 to deal with the challenges that face, you face um, every student, every human being as you grow, as you face a world, you, you, you face a lot of challenges and uh, you, you, your, your ability to deal with those challenges is what uh, determines if you're gonna be successful or not. And thank you for, for that. And any other question, we can have a room for one question. And thank you, uh, Wendy, for that, uh, for that comment. Yeah, do you have, uh, I, I know, and I'm saying this because we have, we are lucky also to have, of course, Bridge will be our guest uh, 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 speaker next month. Uh, so do, do you work with, uh, with them or does your program have a way that you connect with them? We do. So um, our students do not receive priority applications with them um, because they are just such a competitive program, but we do very specific work with our students on applying. Um, we've had a lot of students who won the Quest Bridge. So this year, our 2021 Hammies, we had um, more finalists than we've ever seen before. We had seven students who were finalists mm -hmm. and we have three who matched with yeah. colleges so 
Um, we'll have one student at Howard, um, one student at Yale, and one student at Stanford fully funded. Mm -hmm. um, so our college counselors um, who are on our staff, they have seen the QuestBridge application many times, so they know kind of what they're looking for and how to frame essays um, to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. Awesome, awesome. Is your office in New York? Our office is based in Seattle, but we do have college counselors in New York um, that kind of help us. So we're kind of operating on both coasts. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, we get there. I'm asking that because we are trying to do, um, um, we're trying to find something that will be able to entice our students to think more about college and think big. So there is an idea of us doing a trip to New York next year. Oh, how um, fun. See if we can get them uh, have an experience and even uh, uh, get a different experience outside, outside this cold area of Missouri. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if there is any other question there. So you've shared, uh, Michaela ha has shared, Michaela has shared her email. I'm pronouncing your name. But uh, on the chat there, so uh, that means you, she's free to answer your questions if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a chance to ask a question and maybe it comes later. I think that would be a good way to be a good idea to grab that email. Uh, if not, then I can share with you for those who need to follow up with her. Um, and Make then, sure when you're applying, put Vitendo on your application because I read through every single application. So, no, Linda yeah. Joanne Muthani, your your names are in my head. I'll be looking for your <laughs> application to come through. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate even for that uh, uh, consideration. Uh, we will definitely uh, keep you posted uh, if something comes up that uh, I know there is a forum that is coming up. Uh, is it next week? Yes. Let me Check. also give you the link. Yeah, to that. put that one. That, uh, we, I would recommend if you everyone can be able to log in. I'm going to share that also on the on our WhatsApp group. But uh, if you can post there, that would be awesome. Yeah, so it'll be next Wednesday at one o'clock Pacific time. Um, so a little bit later for all of you, I believe. Yeah. Um, but I will just be giving general information again about um, the program. And then there will be a couple students who just received the scholarship last year on there as well. Um, so you can hear from them or ask them any questions you have. Great, great, great. I appreciate that. And then if anything comes up and in between the year, even next year, yeah, if you have some stuff, please share with us on our email. I don't know if I can I maybe have to also maybe sign up on your newsletter so I can see what's happening. And uh, hopefully maybe next year when we have a trip uh, to go to New York, we can have one or two of our students uh, enjoy that great trip to New York and, and party time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And definitely stay connected. I'd be happy to post anything else with you all. This is a great group. Great, great, great. Yeah, any final thoughts uh, for the group? You have, uh, you wanna share, some, share something in for you, uh, for the final thoughts, uh, Michaela? Uh, I think just thank you all. I know that this is a wonky time on a Saturday, so I appreciate all of you just being here and learning more. And I hope that you take this investment in yourself to apply. Awesome, awesome. That, that's up. And Matoni, you have some thoughts. You may also put it on there for our audience. No, I'm just really, really thankful for this opportunity. Um, yeah, this is awesome. I love the flexibility too, because I think one of the things I've asked about in the past is where we have things where, um, like you don't make enough money to afford college, uh, but you make more than, you know, like you don't meet the guidelines for low income, mm -hmm. but, but and yet you still don't make that much, that college is an easy thing for you. So just having opportunities like that, it's not just about the cost, but having the guidance um, and for our kids, you know, like the resume review, those are just things that are really important in the, and the mentorship that comes from being part of a group that's, multiple years. So I really appreciate the opportunity and thanks Jeffrey for making this possible.
Thank you so much for joining um, for the joining us today. I know you have a busy schedule, <laughs> but we appreciate. So uh, with that, I will say thank you so much, uh, Mikala. I really, really appreciate for that information. I felt like I was really in the classroom and I know that information I will be able to share with others. Uh, same way, I would say those who are in audience, please, 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 whatever information that you've learned, uh, if you're taking notes, please share with your group. Uh, encourage them to participate, especially those who are junior uh, before the deadline, which is January 26. So uh, at least uh, we can we can uh, the, the, get their name out and, and have the right so that they can be able to make informed decisions. And then uh, just reminding that we have our dinner that is coming up next Saturday. I know, uh, Mikala, you'll be a little bit far, so we'll share the pictures. Don't worry. <laughs> I would love to see them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, our next uh, meeting, it's going to be on January 22nd. And we have uh, uh, our guest from uh, Questbridge. And uh, we're also sharing about the program and scholarship. It's a, it's a great program. And I know a lot of people uh, have benefited from the program. And again, information, I'm sure we're going to be able to learn more from them. And, and I'm happy that now we can be able to combine from Hamilton and now Questbridge putting it together. That's a big package uh, that can benefit our students. Other than that, I will say thank you so much. And uh, are you in Seattle right now? Yes. Okay, good, good. We have a lot of students that are, that are also in Seattle that we may also be able to connect them to know. It, it, do you have a, 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 a campus there or how does it work? We don't right now, but we will in the future. The pandemic, we all are working from home at the moment, but we will definitely have a base where hopefully we can meet with your students in the future. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. Have a nice weekend. Uh, see you next, uh, see you for those who are gonna see you on Saturday. Perfect, Madon, Madoni, we look forward to see you on Saturday. You are a great, a great hero on that day. So we look forward to see you and uh, hope everyone else will be able to join with Joan and Wendy. I see you on the list. Awesome. Take yeah. care all. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.